Rakdos returns, Liliana's big Garrick, so Billy's trying to go big. Definitely, definitely. And, and Tez trying to do the same thing too. He's trying to ramp with an Arbor Elf, trying to ramp with the Avacyn Pilgrim, but essentially just dropping locks on Smiters, Hunt Masters, Restoration Angels, and just, and just really powerful creatures. Ted actually was not even going to play this weekend. He's in a band, and his show got canceled because of the snow. That's why he came. Wow, that's pretty good timing. Yeah. About to make top eight if he can win this match. Yep. All right, so Billy P plays a Pillar of Flame targeting Ted's Arbor Elf. So it's going to slow down uh, Ted a bit, but he's going to follow up with a second Arbor Elf. So I missed having you in the booth. Oh, you know yeah, what? I was, gone. I was gone for too long. I'm sure Ruben did a pretty good job. He did, yeah. It was nice having yeah. Ruben in the booth as well. So Billy P is going to play his third land in the form of Cavern of Souls. Good chance it's on human, I'm guessing? For Billy? Yeah. Um, Regardless, he plays a Rakdos yeah, Key probably. Rune and passes the turn. It'll be something that can make green mana, so it'll, it's either be on beast or human. It doesn't really matter, though, because his mana is perfect this game. Yeah, yeah. Billy P, I mean, his deck just has really good mana. It does. It okay. can even fit into Kessu Wolfram. Cavern is on Vampire. Kind of surprising. Yeah. Well, why not? He already has double black for the Vampire Nighthawk. Exactly, but it is his only double spell. Sure. So. Meanwhile, Ted continues to ramp his mana in the form of a, a third Arbor Elf. Two are in play, one's exiled because of a Pillar of Flame. Wow, I wonder... Oh, Bonfire <laughs> for one. I was going to say, I wonder what kind of hand he kept. Uh, Maybe a, Interesting. Yeah, not, uh, not too sure. Maybe a rules question there. Regardless, Ted has a thrag, double Thrag Tusk. He drew one that turn and he had another one. So he was trying to set up an early Thrag Tusk, but instead all the elves met a terrible fate right there. Kill every elf on site. And That's Billy really P's motto this game. Yeah, and there's a Hut Master. Billy P has always been kind of the mid-range player. So... Billy P's just waiting on a wolf, it looks like. And there's one of the Star City wolves. Billy P doesn't have any more lands. Wow, so three lands and a key rune and stop. He'll be able to play one spell each turn. That's pretty much it. And that's that's always been the problem with these Jun decks. All these spells are so powerful, but so but expensive. Yeah, yeah, their spells are kind of slow and clunky. Yeah. I actually showed Ben Lundquist a, uh, a deck that I wanted him to play at one of the opens out in California. And it was a it was a jump deck, and he just said it was just way too slow, way too clunky. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when you have to play Rakdos Key Rune in your deck, that's when you know it's slow. <laughs> yeah, slow, <laughs> slow and clunky, but but powerful if if you get the uh, the right you know mix of lands and spells. Exactly. All right, so Billy P draws a Far Seek, not quite a land, but it will probably do right now. I think I think if Billy P had the option of not drawing a Far Seek or risking it. I think he was just settled and take the Farseek. Yeah. The problem with that is, again, Farseek takes up your whole turn just to get one more land. And it also doesn't help you flip the Huntmaster. If it right. was just a land, you know, Billy could have just not played anything, but... Yeah, I, I think I might have activated Kirun and swung and flipped my Huntmaster. Yeah, that could definitely be reasonable. Maybe he he's fearing, like, an Abrupt Decay or a Searing Spear, and he really doesn't want to lose the uh, the Kirun. I mean, obviously, Abrupt Decay could hit the Kirun, but the Searing Spear wouldn't. Right. But then again... There's a good chance Ted Prizes would have Searing Spear the, um, the Hunt Master. So, I'm not really too sure what Billy's oh. plan is, but there's a little Well, that's pretty good. That's yeah. better than Farseek and Key Road. Definitely. So, he's going to activate Liliana, making it go up to four loyalty counters, having both player discard cards. Yep, and now this is good for him because Ted can play all the spells. Billy's playing one spell a turn. Um, he's going to be cutting Ted out of options far sooner than it'll be cutting himself. Sure. I think Ted's hoping to draw his uh, one of his two Rakdos returns, but Bonfire for two is pretty good here. That might be Miracle. Okay, not, not no, Miracle. No. No, he, he had it in his hand. Yeah, his hand was Bonfire, Thrakdos, Thrakdos. Okay. So Liliana down to two counters, takes out the Huntmaster. All right, so Billy P finally draws his fourth land, which gives him access to five mana. So if Billy's holding on to a Thrakdos, which I think he might be, he'll be able to play Thrag Tusk and pump the Liliana again. I'm not sure if Ted should have played his sixth land or not. Yeah, that definitely seems like a mistake. The fact that he has to lose Thrag Tusk now, yeah. that's pretty ugly. All right, so Billy P's going to play the, the uh, Drug Skull. Oh, okay, it was a um, red-black dual land. Had to come to play tap, so even if he had the Thrag Tusk, couldn't play it. Okay, fair enough. Huntmaster is pretty good, too. Yeah, definitely. So he's getting two life and put the token into play. Billy P draws for his turn. Okay, so he did have a Thrag Tusk. Now he can actually play it. He'll play it off the Woodland Cemetery. Dragon Skull Summit. 
was played last turn. All right, so Billy is going up to 28 life, I believe. 28, and, <laughs> and Liliana discards Lux. his pillar, but Smiter goes right into play. Yeah. So Billy P's still in good shape here, even though that Smiter oh, yeah. was pretty important. Yeah, yeah, he's in great shape. And I think Billy just wants to chump the Thragtusk, just keep Liliana alive. Exactly. So Thragtusk trades with Smiter, Billy gets a 3-3 out of the deal, and the wolf is down. Oh, another Thragtusk wow. for Ted. That, that was definitely a good draw. So but, I mean, unfortunately, you know, for, for Ted, Billy just has the key rune, so you can sit behind the key room and, and just block the Thrak Tusk all day long. Exactly. The key rune, it, it looks really janky because it's a three mana artifact that seems to only add mana. It's so good against Thrak Tusk. Yeah, it really is. And it's also fine at attacking, getting three damage just for, for activation of two mana. Yeah, that key rune is one of the best for sure. I think Billy P drew a land, which is fine here. Yeah, he, he doesn't even mind that. That gets him up to six mana. That gets him up to Mortar's mana. The fact that it's a green land gets him closer to Garrick. Yeah, and he doesn't even need to play a spell because he can just flip hot, uh, his Hutmaster. Exactly. So I think here Billy just wants to activate Liliana and just pass the turn. I, don't, I think yeah. there's no need to attack. Yeah, I completely agree. Just up Liliana, go. He's in great shape. He's threatening Liliana ultimate in only a couple turns. Yeah, definitely. Huntmaster can now trade with Garrick if he wants it, or uh, rather Tusk if yeah. he wants it too. But he won't need to because he has a 3-3 beast and a 3-1. Right. That will be a first striker. And, and then the Ravager of the Fells will just take over the board of beasts. Yep. Ted's going to swing in and Billy is just going to activate his key rune. And those are the blocks that we were expecting. So Billy says, hey, take my beast. We'll save some time. And I think Ted's just going to play out his last land and pass the turn. Ooh, Billy drew another Liliana. Kind of unfortunate here. Yeah, it is. Not much he can really do about it, though. He's he's still in great position. Oh, he, he makes him... Oh no, it's not. Oh, oh, it was a staff in him. Wow. Wow, I thought it was a Liliana. So one staff in him, Billy's deck. He draws it off the top. And That's that actually like the best draw for him. Is the best draw in the deck. Yep. There's it really no doubt is. about it. Oh, okay. there's a hunt master for Ted. That changes the game a little bit, but still, Liliana plus staff of him, just these repeatable effects that cost no mana every turn. Yeah, I are mean, just going to be too much. Yeah, this game is is so heavily in Billy's favor right uh, right now. Billy draws a Farseek and a Huntmaster. So now Billy can actually play both spells. He can play Farseek and Huntmaster. Yeah, and that would reflip his Huntmaster. Reflip his Huntmaster. But then if Ted just doesn't do anything, Ted would flip his Huntmaster. <laughs> so Billy doesn't want to flip his Huntmaster. Right, right. Kind of, kind of an interesting spot. A spot that he's just not going to cast Farseek so that I, he can keep his Huntmaster flipped, maybe. Well, I don't even know if he wants to cast the Huntmaster because the Huntmaster is just going to die. The second Huntmaster. Yeah. yeah, that's true. So, although Billy's in a, a good position, it, it's still a little bit tricky because Billy just wants to make sure he doesn't die. As the longer the game goes, the better it is for him. Exactly. I mean, that Liliana is just going to tip upward and upward. The staff is going to draw card after card. Yeah, he definitely wants to keep the Liliana out of the Hunt Master's range. So I think it's fine here. Okay, so he's going to play Farsi. Yeah, he decides that's better than Hunt Master. Well, I mean, he, he could still play Huntmaster. Right, he, he could. Which I think he might just do. I can see him playing Huntmaster and then just taking up Liliana. I think that plays fine, because then if Ted doesn't play anything, that means he's drawn a land or whichever card that he drew, draw is just going to lose to Liliana anyway. With the new trigger rules, does uh, does that change whether or not he chooses to flip his Huntmaster? Can he choose not to? No, because it's always up to your opponent. Still has to, right? Okay. All right, so the Huntmaster that was already in play is flipping back down. And Billy would get another two life and another token. Now, I mean, Billy's just in great shape. And it's it pretty much coming down to the cards that gave him more and more card advantage. Liliana gave, gave him many card advantage. Staffanin, many card advantage. So Ted really doesn't have a way to, to, to break through this or gain the card advantage back. No, and you know, in a matchup of these mid-range decks, that's what's usually going to take it. Billy P has two Garrick Primal Hunter, one Staff of Nim, two Rakdos Return. Ted only has uh, two Garrick and two Rakdos Return. So I, I guess I guess Billy is up 
on or up one staff of men and two Liliana. Sure. In terms of long game. All right, so Billy now will lose one of his hunt masters, but his other hunt master will flip. Right, and that'll deal two to the Ravager, but more importantly, two to Tad, bringing sure. him down to twenty. Exactly. So Billy's gonna draw two cards again. There was that a Garrett? I think it was a rootbound crag. Oh, it was a rootbound crag. Okay. Yeah, it's just two lands, I guess. Yep, looks like two lands. All right, so not that good for Billy, but he's still in fine shape. Now, do you think Billy would want to just lose his Liliana? We can't see it at home, right. but there's a Liliana with two counters. So what do you think? Maybe we could get Billy to move his Liliana down. If we could, just everybody at home could, uh, you know, follow the game a bit better. No, it looks like he's just plus wanting it, making it go to three counters. He's just still going to make these uh, these guys face off with each other. These creatures just stare each other down because he always has the key rune plus the staff of him to first strike down a rabbit. Exactly. So yeah. he can never get attacked by it. Yeah. It looked like Billy was kind of tempted to actually activate the key rune and attack. And then if Ted wanted to attack, the Hunt Masters would trade the Ravagers and Fells. Right. He's going to go with the safe line. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think I agree with Yeah, that. I definitely agree. The longer the game goes, the better it is for Billy. Right. Ooh, there's a Rakdos okay. return. Okay. So that'll deal with the Liliana. Sure. And really, that was the only downside of Billy's card. Yeah. Ted decides to tap all his mana. Yeah, why not? He's just like, I'll just tap all my mana. <laughs> Discard all the cards. <laughs> so Billy drew a Farseek and a Thragtusk, it looks like. So I think right here, I think Billy actually just wants to attack with his Ravager of the Fellas. Yeah, at this yeah. point, now that his Liliana's Perfect. dead, he has to go aggro. Yep, I really like that play. He attacks with both, and he's just going to follow it up with a Thragtusk. Boom. All right. So Billy gains some more life. He's up to 35 now. 35. He's, you know, he almost has the achievement double your life total. Yeah. He's really close. All right. T and Ted's, you know, trying to stay in it, but the but game's almost over. Really? He could draw yeah. the best card in his deck every, every turn. turn he yeah. would still have trouble beating the staff of him. Yeah, definitely. Does he have any main deck way to kill it? Did Billy, like, shoot Ted? I, I didn't even see if... He's been shooting Ted every turn, yeah. But even last turn? I, like, I, I mean, so. they might just say, you know, take one. Right. And we, we can't really hear, so. Yeah, he did shoot it. The left hole got updated. So you got Ted, zero ways in the main deck to kill that staff of him. So that is in play for the rest of the game. All right. The, so. the only way I see him winning is maybe if, if he somehow resolves a Garrick Primal Hunter, draws some cards, draws into an Aurelia the War Leader. There's, there's a chance. I mean, I mean Billy just wins with the Olivia here. Right. He just uh, straight up wins. Yeah. Yeah. I think Ted is just lethal, it's just lethal this turn, right? He steals it. Five, eight, fourteen. He could just, he could steal it, shoot, shoot once, pump, and then steal it, and then it's just lethal. Uh, there's a Restoration Angel. Okay. okay. So it's gonna prolong the game one more turn. Yeah. Ted actually drew really well this game. Yeah. Off the top, he, like he, he kind of drew like the best he possibly could have. Every turn, and, and, yeah. And he's still, still the, yeah. yeah, yeah. Planeswalkers are just too powerful. Staff of him too powerful. Yeah. Staff of the card you don't see too often in standard. If yep. you do, it's usually a one of. Right. In these, you know, John mid mid range decks. But in this kind of matchup, it's perfect. It's exactly yeah. what you want. Definitely. Something unkillable. Your own personal Honden. All right, so <laughs> Olivia grows and grows. 7-7, seven, seven, Olivia. 7-7 seven, seven up now. All right, Ted finally draws a brick, just draws a land, and decides to scoop it up. All right, let's take a look at their sideboarding. All right, what's Ted have? Ted's definitely going to bring in his two Olivias. He's going to bring in an Oblivion Ring. He's going to bring another Rakdos Return. He's going to bring in an Umbrella Rights. What do you think about those Triumph of Ferocities? I actually thought about it at first, and then they decided against it. I think it's just too much of a risk. Uh, he does have the smiters, which is really nice, and he's on the play, so I can see him bringing it in for for this game, for game two, but for not game, game two. three. Yeah, for game three, triumph on the draw against a deck that you know does have a lot of removals and just has big creatures itself. It's just kind of risky that it just might be a three mana draw one. Yeah, if that, if that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, it, a lot of the times what happens with that card, you play it, you think you're all set up for it, your opponent just. Kills your biggest creature. Yeah, kills your biggest creature. Kills your next biggest creature, and then oh, I played this three-man enchantment that doesn't advance my board state. Yeah, and I mean, and, behind. and even if it draws you two cards throughout the course of the game, it's not very good because you really don't know how the pace of the game's going to go. Right. Sometimes the game goes really long. Sometimes the game goes really quick. 
it's kind of like think twice in that way. It's like people are paying five mana for Council of the Sortami. This isn't that much better a lot of games. Yeah, sure. I mean, in a super long game, it's going to be nice. But in a super long game, you know, it just, it just shows you staffing in how powerful it is. Right. You know, it's always going to draw you an extra card, and it's going to have the second ability of dealing a damage anywhere you want. Uh, Triumph of Procrastity, although it costs three mana less, it's just a, a lot more difficult to use and, and, and properly get the advantage. So, before the match started, I thought Billy P had a favorable matchup. I, I still think he does. I think Ted is really going to be uh, reliant on drawing his one of his three Reckless Returns. Yeah, that card is very powerful. We saw that game. Billy had a full hand uh, long after Ted did. Um, the only problem was he drew the Reckless Return when Billy had right. zero cards in the scene. Right. But, after, but in this game, he'll have access to three. Yeah, so he'll, he'll bring in his extra Reckless Return, which will definitely help. I could see Ted bringing in like one or two slaughter games just because he knows that it could come down to a Hunt Master War, it could come down to a Thrag Tusk War. So I could see that being the case. But it could, but I don't, I don't think I don't so. I really like it. Yeah. No. I mean, if he is going to do it, he's going to have to do it this game because slaughter games on the play is much better than slaughter games on the draw. With Avis's Pilgrim or with Arbor Elf, Ted is able to go, you know, turn three slaughter games much easier where it's going to have a big, a big factor to the game. Right. The other thing is, is that Ted might actually have to board out some of his mana ramp creatures. You know, yeah, I really like that. I would take out all three Arbor Elves, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, having having all these 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 one ones for one mana, it's just it, after turn one, they're they're just really bad, and it's just a liability against Billy's heavy removal deck. Exactly. Ted's playing twenty four land, four Avacyn's Pilgrim, three Arbor Elf, four Farsi. So really, that's like thirty one lands. He's like thirty five mana sources. Thirty five mana sources. Yeah, yeah, 35, 35 yeah. mana sources. That's so insane. He has to cut at least three Arbor Elf, maybe even some Avacyn's Pilgrim. Make those bonfires in Billy's deck less of a blowout. I mean, we saw what happened. He just got two for one. He was really relying on his Arbor Elves. And then Billy P's just like, okay, bonfire for one. Yep. And then Ted did nothing on his turn four. He just played a tapped Overgrown to him. And the Thrag Tusk just sat in his hand and had to wait an extra turn before he could have to play. Yeah, exactly. We're on the same page with those guys. We'll see if Ted does it. Yeah. Uh, on the other side of the table, Billy P... He also has access to slaughter games. Again, I don't, I don't think we'll see him, but uh, Billy P definitely would not bring the slaughter games against Ted. But I can see Ted bringing the slaughter games against Billy because Ted is, you know, the aggressor in the matchup. Yeah, the onus is on him to really win the game too. Billy P just has to survive to let his more powerful deck take over. Definitely. What's Billy P gonna bring in? Did we go over that yet or no? Uh, he has two duress if he wants to fight against Rakdos return. But that's, Billy, Billy doesn't fair. know how many he has. He also doesn't know that Ted has Garrett. Yeah, uh, no. I mean, he's, he's probably gonna have to assume that that Ted has some 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 form of planeswalkers, either Garrick Relentless or Garrick Primal Hunter. Yeah, Billy's a sophisticated player. Just because he didn't see it, I, I'm sh I'm sure he'll bring in the duresses. Definitely. Um, what do you think? What do you think about the Death Rite Shamans? Yeah, I'm not sure what matchup those are there for. I mean, it's pretty interesting to see him in the board. It's obviously powerful against the Reanimator matchups, getting it down to turn one and stuff. But also, in some of the grindy matchups, a card like Death Rite Shaman. Could be pretty good. Yeah. I like it a lot. Um, yeah. Also versus Zombies, Death Ray Shaman, although Zombies isn't really a deck right now, in my testing, it's been one of the best cards. Right, because you get to remove their Grave Crawler, you get to remove their Drops Messenger, messenger yep. and just also just playing it and knowing that if they don't kill it, it's going to gain you six, eight life throughout the course of the next couple of turns. It's just so devastating for them. Right, it lets you play your game so much differently. Yeah, it's even it's even good against the mono red decks because they just have to kill it. Exactly. And it's just really good to be able to stop a turn one Noble. It's actually pretty good to slow roll against the red decks too if they don't have Noble because you bait out the removal, you play death right, all of a sudden this is this card that's just going to gain you two life every single time. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Definitely really good. So I don't, I don't think I Billy don't, will change up his deck too yeah. much. I think just Duress, maybe Deathrite Shaman. Yeah, and he would probably bring up Deathrite Shamans too against like the, the Temple Flash decks, just to stop Snapcaster Mage, maybe cut off a Moreland Haunt. For sure. And just to gain some life. Yeah, why not? Rune Chanter Spike, you want to shrink? Everyone loves gaining life. Yeah, pretty good. All right, so it looks like both players you got to keep. And Ted leads off with a Stomping Ground. So no, no Pilgrim, no Arbor Elf. Maybe that signifies that he did board them out. Yeah, I think so. Two mana, Farsi. Ooh, Farsi. That's this, the mana Excel yeah, he wants. This is the draw that Ted wants. He doesn't He doesn't want an elf. He just wants to go second land uh, into a Farsi. Right. And hopefully drop a four mana creature like a Huntmaster, an Olivia, a Resto. Get the pressure down early while Billy's deck is still clunky. And Billy P plays a second land and then passes the turn. Yeah, no Farsi for him. 
maybe sitting on a, uh, an ultimate price, maybe sitting on a Searing Spear. Sure. But that's all he has on two. All right, Ted draws. I think he drew a land that turn. I see a stomping ground in his hand. And do we have a smiter? No, he just wow. passes the turn. Nothing, huh? All right, so this probably signifies that Ted has a hand of Reckless Return, Drag Tusk, just really expensive cards. Maybe some removal cards like a Searing Spear. But I guess not because he would have definitely killed that Vampire Nighthawk, I think. Yeah, in interesting to note, Ted had no, no black men so far. Although, actually, there it is. So he can Rakdos return at will. All right, so there's a Thragtos. Ted goes up to 25 life. And Billy draws a Death Ray Shaman, is it? It looked like... Oh, oh it was a Duress. Duress. Okay, at first I thought it was Duress, and I thought it was a Death Ray Shaman. So, Let's notice see. the turn Billy P played. Ooh, oh, wow. wow. That's a bad hit. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Uh, yeah, his, his best hope now is just going to be to Kessig Wolf on the Thrag Tusk and hope it's enough. Yeah. Maybe he could start townshipping the Thrag Tusk? Yeah. You know, that might just be better in the long run. If you were Billy, what do you take here? Abrupt Decay or Bonfire? Oh, definitely Abrupt Decay. Yeah, yeah. definitely Abrupt Decay. Bonfire costs so much mana. Yeah, and it's just so slow and it's not effective until like 7 mana. Now, I, th I, I think it's pretty important to note. Even why, though Billy why drew we that, have bonfire in his deck? I, I don't know. It seems bad. Yeah. But even though Billy drew that duress that turn and played it that turn, I think he would have waited for this turn anyway because oh, this for is sure, the key yeah. turn. Because yeah. you have to get Rakdos return right before he's about to cast it for your whole hand. Yep. And there's a Liliana, so he's definitely going to plus it to four. Ted's just going to picture a blood crypt. And, oh, Ted drew a Smiter, which is pretty good here because now Ted could attack. Billy's going to block. He could pass the turn. He'll have a 3-3 three, three and a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. That's Wait, really, why? really good. Wait, why so, would Ted trample over? So Kessig Oh, because he's killing a Liliana? Right. But why? Why would you want to kill a Liliana there? When you have Smiter. It might not have been a Smiter that he drew. No, it's definitely a Smiter. Or he might have been worried that Billy was going to minus two make him sack the beast, in which case his entire plan falls apart. No, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think there's... I don't know. Is my play like bad and risky? Uh, it's really risky. I don't know. It's it's only bad if they don't plus one Liliana. All right. But that's the line Ted chose. Now he yeah. has a three three beast, a wolf run, and seven lands. He's trying to take Billy P's life total down in big chunks. All right. So seven everything's getting chunks. pumped into the beast. Wow, Billy just with nothing. Yeah. Wow. I'm I surprised. Wonder what he's sitting on there. I really thought Billy like had this game after that duress. Taking away most of Ted's action. There's a Barter in Blood. Barter in Blood it. reprint. Yep. This one's from Avisory Store. Two colors, black, black. Each player sacrifices two creatures. Really good against, you know, Geist type decks. Wow, and another Thrag Tusk from Ted. He's just drawing really, really well yeah, this Yeah, but you know what? Billy just drew this turn. It looks like an Olivia. Wow. Unless I'm making it up. That's even better than Thrag Tusk. There, there, there is. she is. The Queen Mother herself. All right, Billy just does it now, makes it a 4-4, plays around Searing Spear, and he also knows that Ted has the bonfire in his hand, so he wants to make sure it's bigger than a 3-3. Yeah, good play by Billy, main phasing the Olivia there. Definitely. His opponent knows he doesn't have anything for 3-mana, yeah. so... And I, I, I mean, next turn, Billy can just steal the Thrakdos. That Thrakdos is a vampire, Billy has three colorless black black to be able to steal it. Yep, Olivia, one of those cards that just, it, it drops in and out of play, but every time you see it played, you're so impressed with I how still, good it is. I'm still almost certain that that was a Locks and a Smiter who drew that turn, and I wonder how the game would have been. Because I think Billy would have... I think Billy would have minus two to kill the beast. He had no answer to it. Billy definitely yeah, would have done that. Yeah, I guess so. All right, so I think Billy drew a Huntmaster this turn. I don't think he's playing it. I think he's just stealing the Tusk. Yeah, he's going to have to. So two, three, so... I get, maybe Ted's just trying to go to the dome. Yeah, he's he's got to be he's just like, thinking I, that. His opponent's yeah. at five and he has a bonfire. Bonfire, why not? Yeah. I don't know if he's going to be able to race it, though. He needs to drop three lands before Billy can do 28 damage. Yeah, yeah. if I were Billy here, I would just steal a Thrag Tusk and attack. Yeah, because next turn you can play the Hunt Master. Yeah. All right. And he's going to shoot the Thrag Tusk. Olivia's going to grow again to a 5-5. Five five. Yep, so Ted down to 23. Yeah, Ted's in bad shape. What can Ted really do? 
Uh, I think he can just fire off a bonfire and hope the top, the top of his deck is kind to him because he's he's not winning the race even if Billy doesn't have Hunt. I mean, there. but there's no card that that he could draw really. He can draw another burn spell. He can draw Rakdos Return or another. But, but Rakdos Return just kills him anyway. Yeah, that's true. Even with Huntmaster, yeah, it does. You know what I'm saying? So or like so another bonfire would just kill him straight up. The only thing maybe is he could draw the, the, the war leader. Yeah, but even so, that that's only two outs in the whole deck. Yeah, and plus if Billy has mana open, he can just steal, steal the war leader. So, so Billy in the driver's seat here, he's trying to dodge a few cards from Ted. Oh, what about this play? What about if you just would not have attacked with direct us? That, that should have been the line. Why is that? Because then there's no way he would have Liliana made him sack. He would have increased the, the, the Liliana to grow loyalty counters. Oh wow, Bonfire, is that enough? One, two. Oh, okay, that, that's a Bonfire for four. Yeah. So Olivia survives. And Ted gets one more turn to draw a burn spell. No, he's just dead. The Olivia will just... Yeah, pump, yeah, pump. Yeah, yeah you're pump, right. Pump, yeah. Maybe Billy won't see it? <laughs> no, Billy's definitely going to see it. He's, yeah. All right. And Billy P wins, and congratulations to Billy P. He makes top eight at SCG Open in uh, Edison. What did you say? This is his first top eight since 05? Is that... Uh, <laughs> I, think he, I think he top eight at a Grand Prix a couple years back. 